This is the Ticks and Trades channel with Sam Morton. Welcome back to another Futures Trading Recap for Monday, November 25, 2024. The time is currently 8.25 a.m. Eastern. The SPY is already up a half a percent in the pre-market. The overnight traders and the futures are pushing back up toward S&P 6,000 or 600 in the SPY. This isn't too surprising since there was nothing all that bearish in most markets at the close of Friday. But the question for me and probably a lot of other traders today is, will they bust through 600 and try for new highs today? Or will there be enough resistance up there to push price back down a little? This is just the second attempt at 600 in the SPY. So it's likely there will be some pushback by the bears if they get there today. I have a zone up there indicated by the dashed lines between 695 and 620. If the SPY can get hourly closes above that area, that probably means they're strong and have a destination higher up. But under typical market conditions, we should see some kind of reaction at these levels today. Right now, an hour or so before the market opens, the spiders are hanging around 598.50, which is in the neighborhood of a level I identified earlier this morning. This area could serve as an access point from which we could gauge the bullish or bearish feel of the market around the open. I mean, they're definitely bullish in the big picture, but if price gets below that 598.50 area and stays below for a while, it could mean the bears are getting a foothold and might be able to pull price down for a retest at a lower level somewhere. It's also a holiday week where the markets will be closed on Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. Usually that means things could be slow, especially tomorrow and Wednesday. But considering where price is at this point in time, I would not want to get complacent in case something unusual happens and volatility picks up. I don't see any data releases scheduled for today. Nothing until some FOMC meeting minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. That may not be too much anyway, since the news from that policy decision has already been disseminated. Whatever happens today, I'll be back after the closing bell, and we'll talk about it. Catch you on the other side. It's obvious what they did today, isn't it? The SPY went right up into the middle of the zone that we identified this morning and met resistance. That was the higher probability thing we talked about. This was the second time the SPY hit 600 and the bears apparently didn't like it. They drove price back down from there. I'll get into the trades that were available per the process that we use here. If you know the strategy and are willing to follow the rules, I realize that there are very few of you who are watching these recap videos who know about the rules that I keep referring to. The ones who do are friends of mine who have been along for this ride since I started the channel. But for everyone else, don't worry, I am on the home stretch of getting the trading course wrapped up. I'm almost hesitant to give a firm date, like a launch date, but I'll just say that I have a lot of incentives to have everything live by the first part of January. My wife thinks it would be appropriate if I was able to launch the course, the subscription service, and all the back end of the website, like the members side of the ticksandtrades.com website, on January 10 because that is an important day to us. It was my son's birthday, or is my son's birthday, I should say. He passed away from cancer right after he turned 18. And since he and I started this whole futures trading thing many years ago as a side project related to a math curriculum he was involved in in school, I think it would be a good tribute to him if the Ticks and Trades business officially opened its doors to customers on that day, January 10. We'll see. That is my goal, though. But I'm already getting off topic. The bottom line is that there are rules and a strategy that I've developed to trade the E-mini futures, and it's all explained in detail in the upcoming course. These recap videos are just the tip of the iceberg. So before I walk through the playing by the rules trades, I'll tell you about the one trade that I took. There is a recording, but all two hours of it is a black screen. I was late in getting set up this morning. Price was already coming back down from this zone. I didn't know it at the time, but I just discovered it a few minutes ago when I was putting everything together for this post-market video that the screen recording software was pointing to the wrong monitor. So it's just a recording of a black screen for two hours. Anyway, I did not do anything with this zone up here. The SPY did almost exactly what I thought it would do when price got up there. But even if I were set up and ready, say, 20 minutes earlier, I'm not sure I would have entered a trade up here, at least not for a short-term scalp trade. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I did go short when... SPY got under this 598.52 level the first time right here. I basically put my money where my mouth is because if you recall from this morning, I said that I was looking at this 598.50, 52 area as kind of a place that the bears, if they could get price under it, they might be able to push price down. I went short right about here, pulled five points on one contract. I was short two contracts. I pulled five points on one, took profit on that one, and then tried to trail the other contract, and I was basically stopped out when they came back up. 
pretty much at the break even. Uh, just more, no more than a tick or two on that second. So price clearly did go lower later. I just jumped on board a little too early perhaps. And after that, I wasn't interested in getting involved in any more trades because I really didn't have time to babysit anything. I had too much going on at the office the rest of the week, actually. It will probably be the case tomorrow and Wednesday, no trades. I might keep an eye on things, but I've got some stuff to do this week before the holiday. So what about playing by the rules trades? So waiting 15 minutes after the opening bell means you would have been looking at price right about in the middle of the zone at the close of the 9.45 a.m. candle. At the time, it was possible that there could have been a bounce at the bottom of the zone before they attempted the top of it, but it was a near-miss kind of thing anyway here. After that 15-minute window opened, price came down within 10 cents, bounced more than enough to satisfy a four-point base hit, so no trade. Really, the trade up here was a bigger kind of thing by, by going short and being willing to see if price would be pushed down more. That was the plan in the bigger picture, but for just grabbing like these little base hits of four points, there are specific things to look for, and this trade would have never been triggered based on those rules. The same thing when price got down to the level at 598.52. I don't adjust levels that make up zones, like up here, but for individual daily levels like this one, I like to move the level toward price by five cents. So the 598.52 would become 598.57. I found that this helps in pulling in more trades when there's a chance that front runners might make price react before the levels hit. In this case, it was another near miss. Price came within 10 cents here and bounced up way more than enough for a base hit. At that point, any order to buy E-mini contracts at that level would have been canceled. The level ended up working. They bounced more than once there. But I'm not counting this trade because we can't just pick and choose which trades we want to keep. Every level is treated the same way per the rules, so the associated tracking log stays accurate and provides meaningful metrics. I'll go ahead and just make these levels dotted because this is my indication the levels have been traded. Once price got under this level and enough time went by, this level would have been viable for what I call a recycle trade. I'll move the price, I'll move the level down toward price five cents from the original level. But unfortunately, they missed it by a few pennies, so this was nothing, no trade there. When price looked like they were going to go straight down and hit 597.36 right here, which I'll move up five cents, so 597.41. They did something that happens occasionally. They did not get within 10 cents and pull up, thereby making that a near miss, but they did get within 20 cents and they did it more than once. So I'll put a line here. So 20 cents will be 597.61. I'll make it a different color. I have this rule that I call the 2020 consolidation rule, which I'll just tell you right now what it is. Usually when this happens, you'll see price get to around 20 cents of a level and go sideways for a while before continuing down to the level. If that happens and it takes 20 minutes or longer, it's a good sign that that kind of consolidation means price will continue in the same direction that they've been going. In other words, less chance of a bounce. But here's what they did today. They got to that 20 cent threshold here. They bounced. So that's not a near miss. It's not within 10 cents. And it def definitely wasn't sideways, but it took an hour and 15 minutes. They bounced again at 20, at this 20 cent mark. By the time they got down to the level, that's when they stalled out, went sideways, hung around this level, and they kept hitting that little 20 cent mark. So that kind of sideways consolidation is a big clue that they're probably not going to bounce. And if you were in this trade on the long side, you'd probably want to second guess this trade at this point. I'm going to call this trade a wash because according to the rules, you would have known what to look for. And this kind of action was your clue to jump out at a break even or a slight profit as they hung around this level for what 30 minutes or so right here. So this level is now satisfied for a long trade, a long trade that never happened. But keep in mind later, we'll talk about the recycle trade on the other side. But when they got down to 596.20, this would be 596.25. And strictly speaking, this was yet another near miss. It doesn't look like much here, but they got within 10 cents. The low of this was 596.33. And they bounced just barely enough to where that could have been a base hit. I'm not sure what I would have done, honestly, if I were in this trade, because earlier in the morning, I was looking down at this gap left over from Friday, and I'll just put a line. It would have been, I consider putting a level at 595.50 and call this entire thing a zone between these two levels. I didn't do it because really at the time, the only thing that level at 595.50 had going for it was the fact that it was a daily close. It was a gap waiting to be filled. But as it turned out, that was the low of the day. So anyway, knowing that that was there, I'm not sure. I may have taken this trade. But even so, if you were in this trade, you went long at this 596.25. They bounced a couple times, almost enough for a base hit. Your profit objective then kept coming back down to it. So at this point, you don't know if they're going to go lower or not. 
like I said, strictly playing by the rules, you would have never entered the trade in the first place because of that little near miss. So that's just being very strict and diligent to the rules. This level didn't exist this morning, so we can't count it. But this level would have been considered done and no trade once again. But finally, they come back up into this level here, and it was five ninety six. It was five ninety seven thirty six operating level. So if we go down to five ninety seven thirty one, they hit this level. They pulled down. You finally got a base hit. Doesn't look like much here, but there's your four points. And if you waited this thing out, they would have given you more. But four points is all we're looking for if you're playing by the rules, and that would have been pretty quick. So four points for the day, one official base hit. And I am curious, though, if anyone got on the short side up here in this zone and rode this thing down for a lot more points than just a simple base hit somewhere. I'll show you a few things on the hourly and 30-minute chart in a moment that could have given you confidence to pull a lot more points if you had happened to go short at that zone early in the trading session. This is what the daily chart looks like. You can see they made an, a new high. They didn't close high, but the former high over here I think was 617 cents. Today they went up to 686 cents and then pulled back down and found some support here, which becomes more clear on the 60-minute chart. So I just want to point out here where they closed. So kind of in the middle of this area. I mean, they got rejected, but they're falling now. Well, let's see, 595.27 currently. I mean, I'm just looking at the, the post-market 595.27. So that's down here somewhere. I mean, this doesn't really mean a whole lot. They're still bullish in the big picture, but you know, they got rejected and they didn't, and they're still being pushed down in the post market. I find that a little bit interesting. But if we look at an hourly chart, so you wouldn't have known this necessarily until the after the first hour closed. But timing was pretty decent up to this point from this little run here, and really the larger run as well. But this, I'm just counting this run here. And while this candle here is not quite a doji candle, volume was pretty good. And so where, considering where they're at, you get this type of indecision, a lot of bulls and bears kind of fighting this thing. It's not too surprising they fell for a while after this point. The question is, where is price going to get caught? And we, we know that now. Kind of the breakout area, the gap left over. And I can just point out what that kind of looks like. So this area here, I'm just going to put a, just a general line in this area. So, so price is coming up to this area. They can't get through this area. They're kind of messing around. They gap above it today. So the next time they come back into this breakout area, which happens to coincide with a gap, generally going to find some type of support. That's exactly what happened today. The 30-minute chart gives you a few more clues because now you have also the first 30-minute candle was a pretty interesting quasi-doji candle on really good volume. And so after you know 10 o'clock in the morning, you saw this. There could have been a retracement, but this is kind of bearish at this point. This would have given you better validation that this zone up here was the rejection point. They're going to go down for a while. And well, that's what happened. But it's easier to see that after the fact, of course. And I wasn't in any trades other than that first thing in the morning. I was really out with like 250 something dollars. But once again, there is no recording of that. So you'll just have to take my word for it. On the playing by the rules log, there's a lot of notes here, but you can read it. It kind of explains everything we went over and how you would have ended with one simple base hit on that last trade, the recycle trade of the level that didn't work out the first time and then three other levels that just didn't behave according to our rules, although you could have been more adventurous. And, but at least for this tracking log here, this playing by the rules log, we can't do that because I want every single level to be treated the same way. I think you probably have a pretty good idea of how that works now. And then over here on the SAMS trades log, it was a two contract position and really the net was 2.62 points because it was 262.50. That was my exact uh, profit before commissions today. So that's a wrap for today. I know I kind of went into the weeds and explained a few things. I hope you found some value in it and learned something. I am motivated to get this trading course out so you can learn all the details for those of you who want to, to uh, dig into it. I appreciate the support. Consider subscribing, liking this video, and try to help me grow this channel a little bit. That would be pretty nice. Thanks again. I'll have levels tomorrow and Wednesday that I'll send out and provide to those of you on my list. Not likely I'm going to trade anything, but I'll still do the work each morning and provide the levels. Talk to you in the next recap video. Have a great rest of your day.